What's up guys, Splintmaster here, and welcome back to this new video. I know, it's been a while, but I'm back, don't worry. And I don't know if you guys pay attention to the news or anything, or if you've been living under a rock, but America is not in the nicest position right now. Let's just say that Trump is kind of ruining everything. We're gonna win so much, you may even get tired of winning, and you'll say, please, please, it's too much winning, we can't take so naturally, people try to find alternatives to American software and American products and just want to use their own local products like European, maybe Australian, maybe Canadian, whatever. As long as it's not American or I guess from the PRC. <laughs> Telegram, of course. I never really intentioned to get political on this channel, but here we are. So let's just start off with the simplest of the list. Let's start off with browsers or search engines, because I know these things are separate, but they are so close to each other. And many of these apps or products or websites have a search engine as well as a browser. So let's just make one of those. First of all, you all know Edge and uh, Google and all those other big browsers made by American companies that steal your data. Well, there's quite some choice to pick from in uh, from European or open source software because, in my opinion, it doesn't have to just be European. It could also be open source. You know, it's both both of those things is a big win in my book. It's already be better than using what the big tech companies are making. So, first of all, for European only, I found Vivaldi browser, Ecosia, and QWant. Personally, I have the best experience with. Ecosia and Vivaldi, so I'm still using those. So there's some open source browsers, like everyone knows Firefox and some things based on Firefox, like uh, LibreWolf and Waterfox. I've been using those as well. They're pretty great, all right? It's literally just Firefox, but, but with better privacy. The best of these that I personally haven't used, but the, I'm calling it the best because it's both European and open source. It's Mulvat browser. It's a Swedish company, or I'm pretty sure it's Firefox based because when I installed it, it looked exactly like Firefox. So I didn't really want to try it out or anything because I've seen this a billion times already. Also, something to watch out for is uh, some companies, you have Startpage and Opera, which both seem to be in Europe, but America and China have the biggest share of those companies, so I personally choose not to use those, but I've been using Ecosia, I've been using Vivaldi, those are fine, I've been using LibreWolf, everything else I named was pretty fine. Everyone uses WhatsApp, everyone uses Telegram if you're a criminal, but there are almost no European alternatives, I'm going to be honest. There are two open source ones that I found. One is Element, one is Signal. I personally chose for Signal, even though it's, it's American, it's open source, and they strive for better privacy than WhatsApp is doing. The reason I would not pick Element is because you have to sign up with a domain instead of your phone number. So it's not really a WhatsApp alternative in my opinion. Besides, let's be real, no normal person, no regular Joe is going to sign up with a fucking domain, okay? No one's going to do that, except for some nerd like me, but no, no normal person will. Also, one that I found that's European is Trema, but that, that costs money, so I don't think that's ever gonna be big. I think it's going to scare people away since WhatsApp and Signal and Element are all free. free. So, big L to Trema for not having a freemium option, I guess. Then, very closely to your chats, we have our socials. Let's start off with the most chat social that we got, Discord. You want to get rid of it? Fine. Here's Revolt. It's a European open source alternative that you can use. I used it, at least I tried it, none of my friends want to use it. But if your friends are chats and willing to try, just try it. It's literally looking the same as Discord, but with better privacy. There's one that's not very European or open source. It's an American company called Blue Sky. 
And the reason it's on this list, even though it's not European or open source, is it's at least an alternative to Twitter. And let's be real. If you don't like Trump, you are not on Twitter, okay? It's Musk's lair. Also, some great alternatives to Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit, respectively, are Mastodon, PixelFed, and Levy. They are all open source, all based on the same uh, protocol, I'm not sure what it's called. I will put it on screen. But the coolest thing about this is that they actually kind of integrate. If you make a hashtag on Mastodon, you can view that hashtag and its post on Lemmy. You can make it as crazy as you want. You are watching a video, I'm making a video. So YouTube is pretty much irreplaceable. I'm just going to start off with that. There's a Dutch solution that's called Dumpert. But it's pretty much like old YouTube and only Dutch people really use it from my knowledge. There's one that's called PeerTube. It's peer-to-peer -peer YouTube. Just It's a good alternative in my opinion, but no one's on there, so you can't really use it yet. There's no big YouTube videos, there's no big YouTubers or PeerTubers. If you are interested in an old YouTube experience, I believe that's not too far from it. And if you want to skip Netflix or HBO, you can just use... So you don't like Google spying on you and you just want to have some privacy for yourself. You can use OpenStreetMap. It's open source, it's an open source Google Maps. That's pretty much it. I haven't used it, I know it exists. I personally went with Here We Go, which is a Dutch company. It's not an open source app, but it's fine. And it works with Android Auto. And it's pretty much perfect to me, except for like biking or something. But with the car, it's perfect. You also have mappy.check. Another solution to Google Translate is DeepL. It's a German company. I don't know why it's called DeepL. It's a pretty stupid name in my opinion. Google Translate is so much more straightforward in their name. And if you want an email, you can just use Tuta or Proton. Tuta has, has a mail client thing and they have a calendar. And Proton has an, an entire suite of apps. They have mail, calendar, docs nowadays. They have a password manager, Bitcoin wallet, and even a drive like Google Drive. And you get like five gigabytes for free if you follow some steps. Proton also has a VPN. Speaking of VPNs. This video is not sponsored by any of these companies. <laughs> Please, if you want to sponsor me, you can. It is paid. You have to pay for the VPN to actually use it. It's only 5 euros. Uh, in my opinion, that's not that much. But the thing about Mulvet VPN is you can pay literally however you want. You're at work sitting at the office, and you use Microsoft Office. That, that, that's kind of it, actually. We just have to use it, because everyone uses it. Is it the best? Not exactly. <laughs> there are alternatives to do literally the same thing, like LibreOffice and OnlyOffice, which are both European and open source. And in my opinion, they're not worse than Microsoft Office. Like, LibreOffice kind of looks off, but only office? Come on, that's the exact that's the exact same thing. And the one that I also had to mention is Open Office. Never used it. It is American, but it's open source, so that kind of makes up for it, uh, in my opinion. You right now are on Windows or Mac OS because you're a normie. But if you're a nerd like me. You are on GNU slash Linux. I have been using that way before this entire brand of un-Americanizing things. But it is open source, it is European, so you could just put it in here instead of your Windows or instead of your Mac OS. I prefer Linux anyways, there's lots of reasons. You can just check it out yourself, there's billions of videos out there explaining every single difference. Also, there's something called slash E slash OS, which is literally Android without the Google stuff. That's just mind blowing to me. You could also go for post market OS. It's literally Linux for your phone. And there's also Pine Time, which is Linux on your watch. 
if it is America, but because it uses Linux, I wanted to include it anyway. And you're talking about your OS. It only makes sense to talk about your computer in general or your phone. So we got some companies, a Dutch company named Fairphone, Finnish Nokia, and I'm pretty sure British Nothing. These are phone brands. Fairphone and Nothing are not that known. Fairphone is also ecologically friendlier than uh, a lot of other companies since you can just buy replacement parts for your broken phone or your broken headphone that you bought from them. Or if you even lose one of their earbuds, you can literally just buy the left or the right one. You don't have to buy the entire thing again. So I think that's a great initiative. Personally, I haven't used it yet. But when my phone gets old and slow, I personally want to check out the Fairphone. Onto computers, I haven't found many computer companies in Europe, but I know there's one that not many people know. It's called Tuxedo Computers, and it's a German company that actually makes laptops and desktop computers with either Windows or Linux. You can literally pick yourself, and they even have their own Linux distro with their own support, I'm pretty sure. So if you have any questions, you can just ask them instead of some open source community. That's not your style. Everybody uses apps on your phone, on your PC, Linux, Windows. And I have some apps that I personally have been using, such as GIMP. I've used it for years. It's a great alternative for Photoshop. There's one that's called DaVinci Resolve. Never used it, but I am planning on trying. It's an Australian company. Uh, there's an app called Afteroid and another app called Droidify. They're literally the exact same app, so you can pick whichever you like the interface of more. I personally prefer Droidify. And it's like Google Play Store or App Store, but with pretty much only open source applications. So you can just find a lot of open source stuff there. There's an organization called Fossil they have like dozens of apps. They have calculator. There's a phone app, literally just for calling people. Literally all the basic stuff you have on your Samsung or iOS. I don't know if it's available on iOS. At least on your Android, you can just replace it with open source alternatives. And instead of using Microsoft or Google Authenticator, you can literally just use Agis or Agis, Agis, no clue how you pronounce it. I've been using it for quite some things already, and it's just working the exa exactly the same like Microsoft Authenticator. So, all right, these were the more open source things I had found, but there's also some European apps. If you use Steam, you might have heard of GOG.com. It's a Polish Steam. I haven't used it, and I don't think I will because I have pretty much everything on Steam. All my games, all my achievements, all my friends. So I don't think I will be using GOG. There's also Bolt instead of Uber. If you want to be picked up by some random stranger with their car, you can in a European manner. There have been a lot of AI chatbots as well. You've heard of ChatGPT, which is American. You've heard of Copilot, American. You've heard of DeepSeek, which is Chinese. But there's also Le Chat. It's an AI chatbot, literally the same as ChatGPT, but French. And if you're gay, you might want to look at Romeo. I will not elaborate further on why I found this app. So, there are unfortunately some apps that I personally couldn't replace. For one thing, Snapchat. I couldn't find an alternative. Also, don't really care about Snapchat. So if you want an alternative, you can try to find one yourself. And if you have one that I just don't know of, tell me, please. Uh, I couldn't find one for Google Assistant. I found one that's open source. I found it on the Droidify App Store, but it sucked. So I'm not even going to include it because it was just absolutely terrible. Uh, I really wanted to get rid of Google Wallet, but unfortunately there's no other app I can use that does the same thing on my smartwatch. Well, please subscribe if you enjoyed. Please comment down below what you think, what you found, if I missed anything also. And have a great day. I hope you're doing well.